All right. So welcome to this fifth fifth part, isn't it? By the way, this part we're going to finally look at the code for the back substitution. If you remember, last time we worried about we subtracted all the columns. So we got um upper triangular matrix. Then we went on and it's trying to explain more in depth what the code does in order to do the back substitution. And now we are going to implement that. So as we said, we are going to loop the rows backwards. And of course here I misspelled it should be rows. Is that rows? Rows, there we go, let me just double check, so I'm not breaking my code, yes, it's rows. So it doesn't really matter in this, because it's a, it's a square matrix, so it doesn't matter if, if I'm looping the columns of the rows, but conceptually it was wrong. So we are looping the rows, and we are looping from row minus, um, rows minus 2, so in this case it's 2, all the way to minus 1, and that's just a Python technicality, because... Uh, first of all, I wanted to have good index indices, so I wanted to start from index 2, in the case of a 3 by 3 end up in index 0. Since I'm offsetting by 1 the starting index, I need to offset by 1 the end index. So we're starting from 2 all the way to minus 1, but it will stop at minus 1, so the last value index is 0. And we are walking backwards, so rather than increment, we are decrementing. And that's all good. So next, as we said, um uh, actually that's column the columns was correct because but again that's that it's just conceptual we're just we're, we since we walk back diagonally it doesn't really matter the row and the columns index is the same but anyway so now that we're looping the columns backwards as as we showed before all right so that's our matrix so we're going backwards. So same index for row and column. So we're doing basically this. All right? So next, we loop all the element on the right of the diagonal. So as you see, we grab the current index, which I think I call, did I call it J in the explanation? So let me call it J here, just to confuse you, you a little bit less. So RJ. Oops, RJ, and that should be it. So we are looping from J plus 1 to the number of columns, exactly as we explained in the previous video. And we compute the value we need. So we grab the element in the correct row, right? So again, J is the is the index in the diagonal, so we can use it as a row index. We multiply by the columns, so basically that's we shifted by how many rows we needed in the buffer, and then we shift by the column. So we covered that in the previous video. So if that's not fresh anymore in your mind, go back and check it. So this is basically we just grab this element, so the first element on the right of the diagonal, right? then we multiply by the same value right which has the same index in this case this one in the solution vector because basically they represent the value we found it in the previous iteration of the row so that's the a value of the undone we already know and once we know that oops close that once we know that, we're going to subtract that to the solution vector, which has the same index of the diagonal index we are processing, so this one. So again, let's just put into code whatever we explained earlier, right? So it's, it's, it's not even fancy. It is super simple, you see it, right? So once we do that for every column that we have, so let's say we are processing the, the, the row number zero, we do for... We process this element, we process this element, then we still need to divide by the element on the diagonal itself. Right? And that's what we do. Oops, I forgot 
This one should be J. There we go. J. J. So basically here, in the solution vector to the slate index of the diagonal, we divide by the element in the diagonal on the matrix. Again, we shift by the for the rows and we shift by the columns. So that should be it. That's how the back substitution work. And by the end of it, the solution we want is in our solution vector. All right? So our solution vector is basically going to hold the value for x, y, and z for which the system is solved, right? So our solution vector is going to resemble this. So we found that. All right? So that's basically how you solve a linear system. And then in the next video, we're going to see how you can apply that. All right? So that's not the only way to solve it. You can also solve it using uh, the inverse matrix, right? Because this is our system, right? If you multiply, left multiply both sides by the inverse matrix, which is written like that, that's not one over A, but it's the inverse matrix, right? So we get this, right? But this, if we multiply the matrix itself by the inverse, we get the identity, right? And multiply by the identity doesn't change the value of x. So we can simplify that to simply e to x equal times b. So we can solve the system rather than do the Gaussian elimination with inverse of the matrix, but you need a way to compute the inverse of the matrix, and usually you can do that with the Gaussian elimination is one of the ways you can do it, right? Of course, if you're solving a small system, there are quicker ways to solve it. So if you know it's a 3 by 3 you're trying to solve, computing the inverse, you can have a bespoke method, uh, which is generally found uh, in the DCC packages, so like Maya and everything. They don't use the Gaussian elimination to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4 matrix, they have hard-coded methods because the number of operations is limited and it's much quicker to do it this way than trying to abstract that. The method I'm showing you work for any kind of metrics and we'll see that in the next next video that it actually, wor it actually works for a 9x9 nine nine matrix and it should work for 100x100 hundred hundred metrics, right? Just gonna take longer to solve, right? So we cover all the code that we had. Right. The last things we need to cover is the swap, but I don't want to cover it in this video. I'm going to quickly cover in the next one. So basically the pivoting, right? But it's super simple. But I'm going I'm going to cover that uh, in the next uh, next video. Okay. So have a good one, guys.